the name of the Lord. If you're joining us live, we're glad to have you on Facebook. Pray the minister of the word of God, touch your heart, help you, strengthen you, bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Things get kind of settled down here for a second. Praise God, church. Have you had a good week? Good week, Brother Brian, doing good? All right. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Trevor, how are you? Doing good? All right. All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the book of Mark today, okay? And we're going to go to chapter 5. The book of Mark, chapter 5. Praise God. And I, I pray this blesses you. Just really spent some time with the Lord. I love it. I, I just love to I lose myself in Christ. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about, but I'll get in the Word and I'll study and I'll lose myself in the Lord. I, I forget where I'm at in a sense. I forget the time. One of the dangers that I have is that I have a, we have a little dog, a little Yorkie. She's three pounds, seven ounces. And so she can get out of the gate of the backyard just if she wants to. She can slip under, get between the, the gate there. And, uh, and so I'll let her out, you know, and then I'll go and study in my office, and then I forget where I'm at. And I have to watch her because she'll get away, but like an hour later. <laughs> and uh, she's only gotten out five times. <laughs> and we're so thankful that there have been some honest people that have given us back to us. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I lose myself in God and his presence, and I love it. And uh, so I want to talk on Mark chapter 5. Let's read with verse 1 beginning there. Verse 1, Mark 5. And it says, And they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God, and thou torment me not. And for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. I'd like to minister today for a little bit here this morning on the thought, The devil and demons and unclean spirits. I want to talk today. I believe this is very relevant for the time that we're living in now. And really has always been. But I want to deal with this subject here today. And I pray that it will open our hearts and minds to the word of God. Understand the time, seasons in which we're living in, which is taking place now. That our battle and our fight is not with flesh and blood. We understand the principalities and powers. There are demonic spirits behind the scenes that are causing this. And so we have to know how to pray and how to combat these things. Not in the flesh, not in our physical not in our physical, physical stamina, but in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. The devil and demons and unclean spirits. Father, I pray for your help and your grace to minister the word of God. I pray for the unction, the anointing, the power of thy spirit to rest upon me here today. Be with my thoughts and my mind, the lips of clay. Father God, I'm nothing without you, and I cannot do nothing apart from you. So I pray there be more words on paper, Father. I pray for the power of thy spirit. Give us ears to hear and receive of thy word, Father. Many people don't want Jesus. They don't want the real Jesus. They don't want the true Jesus. They don't want the Jesus of the, that causes a person to change. But, Father, we desire you. We want your presence. We want your word. We want your glory. We want the Lord. And we thank you, Father. We bless you. We worship you. We exalt you as we ask these things. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. And you may be seated here this morning and praise the name of the Lord, the devil and demons and unclean spirits. And this is a story where Jesus encounters a demon-possessed man. And many of us have heard the story. Maybe we read the story before in Mark chapter Chapter 5. Also, we know it's in the book of Luke, it's in the book of Matthew as well. And I want to talk today about the devil. I want to talk about demons and witches and wizards. And, and uh, yes, the spirit world is very real. We have to understand the spirit world is very real and God is real. Angels are real. Satan is real. Demons are real. Heaven is real. And also hell is real. And we as Christians will have times of confrontations with the power of darkness just like Jesus did as we read here in the scriptures and the word of God. And the closer we are to the coming of the Lord, uh, I believe that we're going to see a deluge of demonic activity. We're seeing it now. You wonder what's going on in the world and why all the chaos and with all the confusion, why all the hate and the racism and all the division, because there's a deluge, I believe, of spiritual demonic activity. Demons will manifest themselves through many avenues, especially people. Jesus had just crossed the Sea of Galilee and he'd been a little bo in a little boat and the Bible said, listen, he was tired and, and now we have to understand that Jesus is divine, he is God, but also we know that he was human, he had a human side to him. He got tired, he got thirsty just like we do. Jesus, uh, Jesus is God and uh, he is God that had come in the flesh. 
flesh. And we, so we understand the word of God talks about Jesus. He is the, the word personified. He is the word incarnate. Carnate. Jesus took upon himself human flesh and became one of us, yet without sin. And Jesus was asleep in a boat, and a storm had come up. And you know the story. And the disciples had become afraid, and they thought that they were going to perish. They thought they were going to die because of the storm. And they were terrified. And Jesus stood up in the boat, and he said, Peace be still. We see that in Mark 4 and 39. And all of a sudden, the winds had calmed down, and the lightning quit flashing, the thunder quit roaring, and the disciples were even more afraid, and they said, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You see, that's in Mark 4 and 41, and they had not yet come to the full recognition that here is the master of all ages, that he is the king of kings, and he is the Lord of lords, and the God of all gods, And but yet uh, they got uh, on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and they met a strange sight. There was a wild man, a naked man, bleeding from head to toe uh, from self-inflicted wounds, and this wild man came screaming towards Jesus and the disciples, and the Bible says that this man was possessed by a demon. He was demon-possessed. This man was full of the devil. Of course, we find out that the devil's name was Legion, signifying that he was possessed with many demons, in fact, thousands of demons, and we'll talk about that here in just a few moments. And some people might ask, do you believe that there are real demons? And short answer, I'll tell you, yes, absolutely, I do believe that there are real demons, and I believe that there are real demons when Jesus walked on this earth, and I believe that there are real demons right now on this earth presently. In fact, I believe that there are demons not only in the world, but I'm going to throw a, a, a monkey wrench at you. I believe that there are demons in the church. Can someone say amen to that? I believe that there are even demons in the church and demons that try to distract and demons that try to hinder, demons that try to cut you off, demons that try to keep you from touching God and God touching you. Yes, demons are real not only when Jesus walked on this earth, but they're real today more than ever, my beloved friends, more than ever. And, uh, and, and most can't decide discern the difference. They can't discern the difference between what is God and what is not God. They, they can't discern the difference of what's going on today. And we need to pray for spiritual discernment and understanding that we might recognize these things. Now there is a real devil. There is a real devil in the world right now. The Bible teaches it and we can see the evidence of his work everywhere. And uh, all of us uh, that are living this Christian life will meet him just about every day because uh, we are in conflict. The Bible talks about this. We are in war spiritually. We are in conflict, not with flesh and blood, but with spiritual forces that we cannot see, but we can see the evidence of them manifesting them in the physical. The Bible says that we fight with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this age in the heavenly places And in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. There is a devil and there are demons and they may be, have a stronger hold in different parts of the world, but nevertheless they are demons and whether you want to acknowledge it or not, they are real and they are at work. But you see, Man must have some sort of supernatural power beyond himself to follow. And many times, if he doesn't follow God or the God of heaven, he will manufacture a God to follow or to worship. He'll follow the devil himself. He'll worship something because we were created to worship. So people will worship something. We were created to worship. And there are those who are involved with demon worship and witchcraft and even sorcery today. And I see this. It used to be hidden, but now we see it come out of the closet and people are proud of this and they boast about this that they worship demonic spirits or they worship the devil or they worship demons. Now what does the word Satan mean in the Bible? The word Satan in the Greek is satana. Can you say satana? That's the word in the Bible for Satan. It is satana, and it means uh, the accuser. We know that Satan is the accuser. Also, it means devil. And we know that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. We know that he is a liar. The Bible said that he is the father of lies. The Bible says that he is a murderer from the beginning in John 8 and 44. And he does not stand in the truth. All right. And so there is the word for Satan. But there's another word in the Bible. For the word demon, or even in the King James Bible, it'll say devils. And it comes from another Greek word that is this. It's diomenia. Can you say diomenia? That's the word right there in the Greek under demons. It means diomenia. It means demon or devils. Demon or devils are demonic beings that go about doing Satan's evil work. In fact, in his very name means to divide. The word devil or demons has the word D in the prefix of this. And so actually it means to divide. In his very name, Satan. Satan does his best to divide. He wants to divide the family, divide the husband and the wife, divide the church and the work of God. That's why you have church splits today because the devil got in the church. I told you a little bit ago that the devil gets in the church. And so the devil got in the church. 
And the devil wants to divide and cause church splits and cause havoc. He wants to divide marriages. He wants to divide Christians because we know that a house divided cannot stand. And so we have to recognize this. A lot of people don't see this. People say, I want my way. I want to do it this way. It has to be this way. But wait a minute. We have to know what the will of God is. The devil's mission is to divide. The devil's mission is to destroy. He comes to seek you. He may, may destroy. His mission is to kill and to steal and to destroy. Christians are divided today. If Satan can keep us divided, he can keep the church from carrying out the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. He can keep souls from getting saved, from us focusing on the lost, from us preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to where we're always distracted in the body of Christ. If he can keep Christians uh, talking against each other, being angry with each other, talking about each other, gossiping about each other, complaining about each other, criticizing each other, then he can keep souls from being saved by the power of Almighty God. You know, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that they were in one place and one accord, and there was unity there. As God poured out the Holy Ghost upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and with power, the presence of God, the mighty tongues as a fire sat upon, upon each of them. And they went out boldly declaring the word of God, but there was unity, and there was oneness, and there was harmony, and there were one accord. And they were able to proclamate the gospel of Christ, and thousands came to know Jesus Christ that day. Yes, my beloved friends, Satan is in the church more than you know. And he wants to distract, he wants to disrupt the work of God and souls from being saved. And he sits back, I believe he laughs at times at the church and at Christians, at the way we act. His evil plots and schemes are working. But the Bible has a lot to say about, about demons. And the Bible says that demons are capable of entering and controlling a man. That's right, my friend. They can enter you and they can control you. And these demons are spoken through the word of God as unclean. The Bible refers to these demons as violent, as malicious. These demons are in conflict even with Christians. Now, I, I don't believe that a Christian can be possessed by a demon. I don't believe that a true born-again believer can be possessed by demons, but demons can oppress you. Anybody know what I'm talking about here today? Demons can bother you, they can irritate you, they can harass you and work on you night and day. Amen. You know what I mean? I got a witness here today. You know exactly what I'm talking about because you can feel the powers of darkness wage war against your mind. But understand that the devil cannot possess you as a Christian, but he can oppress you. And he can attack you and he comes against you and he wars in the thinking of your mind and he lies to you and he causes a confusion because we know that confusion is not a God. He causes us to doubt and to fear. He tempts us with unbelief. And the moment you become a born again child of God, you'll know the devil is very much alive. You'll know because you're a target. Because he'll do everything he can to try to hinder and to keep you from worshiping the Lord and serving God. Paul said this, we're not ignorant of his devices. And in other words, we're not unaware or oblivious to his tricks and his schemes. That we've got his number. We are wrestling not with flesh and blood, as the Bible says, but with principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Listen, every person outside of Jesus Christ is in danger of demon possession. Just like this man in which we talked about and read about here this morning. The man of Gadara, the man that was full of the devil himself. Every person outside of Christ is in danger of demon possession. You are a possible subject of demon possession. I've met people who were demon possessed. I've had confrontations with those in the past that were demon possessed. In this country, also in other countries. I've seen the manifestation of demons in places and people. I think one of the greatest manifestations I saw was when my daughter Morgan and I went to Nicaragua. I can't believe how time has gone by so quickly, but it was 10 years ago. It was in the year of 2012. And we went down to Nicaragua to minister the gospel of Christ. I loved it down there. The people were open to the gospel of Christ. A lot of Catholics, very, very, you know, filled with Catholicism. But yet, nevertheless, they're very, very nice. And I was able to minister the gospel to them. And I remember as we were all in the car and we were driving into the town of where we were located, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this man comes in front of the car and starts yelling and screaming and cursing us in his language. I didn't understand what he was saying, but I was told by those that know the language down there that he was cursing and swearing at us. And another man says, that is a demon-possessed man. And so they were manifesting themselves. And I remember another time as my daughter and I had gone out into the city, into the town, and we had like 200 or 250 tracks in their language in Spanish 
And we wanted to make sure that we're able to get these out. And so my daughter and I, we'd walk and we went to the square and we went to the other locations of where people were. It's amazing because the, the, the people were so hungry for the truth, so hungry for the gospel of Christ, that if they had something else in their hand that they were reading, they would put that aside and they would read the gospel track. Not one gospel track fell to the ground. Not one. Not one. It's amazing. And uh, we had a few run-ins with a few people. There's one guy that tried to take my daughter's camera. <laughs> that didn't go over too well. But we were ministering and we were passing out tracts and people were hungry and they were reading these. And so we passed out all 250 tracts. In fact, we passed these tracts out and people would come back to us and ask us if we have more. We had a multiplicity of different kind of tracts with different stories about the gospel, how to be saved, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And they would come back and they wanted more. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord, right. And uh, as my daughter and I we were walking back to the hotel that we were staying at, just before we got to the hotel, we rounded the corner, and there was a man there, and I'd never seen him before. I never saw him since, but he came out onto the street, and he looked at my daughter and I, and he began yelling and screaming with the scream, unbelievable, and began cursing and swearing at us in his language. And it was a man I know that was demon-possessed. How do you know that? Because I can sense it. I can sense the powers of darkness. I can sense the powers of evil. And so I knew that he was demon-possessed. And my daughter and I went up into the apartment, into the hotel there. And there's a balcony on the second floor. And I went out there to see this man. And he was gone. I couldn't find him anywhere. Powers of darkness that wage war against the child of God, against the Christian. Now, I guess I'm trying to say today, church, I said we got to be aware of this because the devil doesn't want you serving God. He doesn't want you being faithful to the Lord. He doesn't want you to be faithful in worship. He doesn't want you to support the gospel of Jesus Christ. He will do everything he can to try to stop and hinder and distract you. And yes, I do believe in America that we're seeing greater manifestations of the powers of darkness than we've ever seen in the history of this country. That's right. You know, one of the terrible features that's going to take place at the end of the world is that new demons are going to be let out of the bottomless pit and they're going to be powerful beings that are going to cause violence and trouble in the world. And it seems to me that some of them have already been released in the last few decades. I think even more and more as you see the time coming before the Lord Jesus Christ comes. And I pray that he comes soon. And I'm looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we're talking about demonic powers, and I believe that there are demonic powers in the world today and in America today. One of the things I want to talk about is the demon of drugs because there is a relationship between sorcery, witchcraft, and drugs. In fact, uh, the word in the Greek for witchcraft is this. It is, it, it is uh, pharmakia. Pharmakia, it kind of sounds familiar. It's from this word that we get our English word, pharmacy. Pharmakia gets our English word, pharmacy, or drugs. Drugs has an association with witchcraft and sorcery. Now, I'm not saying that all drugs, of course not, but there seems to be some evil force that's ruling the big pharma today. Can you say? Amen to that. There's some kind of powerful force behind Big Pharma today. There are those that take drugs, abuse drugs, get high on drugs. And there's no doubt that these people are opening themselves up to demon possession. I think in Marion, Ohio, we have a great problem here in Marion. Think about this. My, as my son, as he tells me, as a police officer, tells me some of the things that go on in this city, folks. There are a lot of people in this city that are bound by Satan, bound by drugs. I believe there are people in this city that have opened themselves up to the demonic powers of demon possession more than you realize. And we need to church that'll pray, a church that'll cry out to God, a church that'll touch heaven, a church that'll touch the hem of the garment of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must have the power of Almighty God. This cannot be with flesh and blood. Amen. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit says the Lord. I'm trying to tell you here that Marion, Ohio is bound. I'm trying to tell you there are demonic oppression in this city. People are demonized. People are fooled of the devil. People are taking drugs left and right. There are drug deals taking place all over of Marion, Ohio. Marion needs deliverance. Marion needs needs salvation. Mary needs Jesus. Mary needs revival. And we people at churches today to not be churchy and to not be religious, but to know how to touch heaven and know how to pray and to believe God for the powers of darkness to be bound in the name of Jesus Christ. We can loose in the name of the Lord and believe in the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Yes, my beloved friend, there is an association with this. What about the demon of alcoholism? The demon has even made its way into the church. There are Christians that believe it's okay to drink alcohol. 
alcohol. And they think it's okay to social drink alcohol. And they're opening themselves up to the devil. Because it starts with just a little taste here, a little taste there. Try it here, try it there until you find yourself having to have more. And your body becomes addicted to the drink. And you have to have, you crave more until Satan finally has you where he wants you. Where you're trapped, or you're in bondage, or handcuffed, or even in prison. There are thousands upon thousands and thousands of lives that have been destroyed and ruined because of alcohol. Innocent people have been killed in car crashes. Their lives have ended because a driver that was intoxicated with alcohol. I know someone years ago that was killed in a car crash because of an alcoholic. She was a Christian. She was a wonderful person in our community and church. She was a wife, but her life was suddenly taken away from her because of alcohol. A drunk driver that hit her and killed her. The demon alcoholism. Homes have been wrecked. Marriages have been destroyed. And yet there are some Christians and pastors that say it's okay. As of 2019, there were over 14 million chronic alcoholics in America. Doubled since 1974. I want you to get this. It has doubled since 1974 that here in America, since 2019, we have over 14 million chronic alcoholics in America. 8.9 million men, 5.2 million women are in bondage of the demon of alcoholism, made invalid by alcohol. Alcoholism is real and a serious problem in America. America worships booze. How many can say amen to that? They worship alcohol, and it, they worship what it can do to you. America worships the demon of alcohol. We're dealing with the demon of alcohol today. But also, thirdly, there's the demon uh, of what we uh, refer to here, the demon of sex. Uh, there are those who struggle with sex, uh, sex obsession. I've known people that have been actually obsessed with it. Uh, that's right. Uh, I've known people, even Christians, that have had affairs with others because they are obsessed with sexuality. I, I've, not, I've had people confess to me that their hearts are perverted. They are in bondage. They can't get the victory because they are obsessed with it. They can't think of anything else. In America, it's just like the days of Noah when the imaginations of their hearts were evil continually until the judgment came. And in America, we have sex trafficking and child sex trafficking. It's everywhere. Listen, my beloved friends. Why are they keeping the Epstein files locked up? Why aren't they exposing his clients? Why are they hiding? There's a huge industry in America today that's getting filthy rich because of sexual perversion and prostitution and immorality and pornography and I believe that it's a great deal of this coming from demonic powers and demon powers are behind this. This is something we have to reckon with in our generation and it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse, my friend. Homosexuality is driven by demon spirits. Multigenderism is driven by demon spirits. Alcoholism is driven by demon spirits. Sexual perversion is driven by demon spirits. And the Bible says, and the whole world lieth in wickedness in 1 John 5 and 19. Satan and his demons are behind it all. Don't you realize what's going on here in America? And you say, that's not just the devil, but that's because of our flesh. Well, this is true. I do not disagree with you. But you see, we fell from our fellowship with God because of the temptation of the devil. And sin began in the garden when Adam and Eve gave into the devil. And the devil's there in the beginning. And he's been there all the time. And the only only power in the world that can overcome Satan is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only way. It's not guns and bombs, but it's a church that knows how to pray, that knows how to pray in the Holy Ghost, that knows how to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We can't defeat the powers of darkness in our strength. We can't defeat it in our own power, but it's only through the mighty power of Jesus Christ that we have the victory, my beloved friends. I believe that demons shake at the name of Jesus, and the the Bible says even the demons believe and tremble. Oh, my beloved friend, I got news for you today. I've got something to give you today. I'm saying this. Yes, there are powers of darkness. Yes, there's spiritual warfare. Yes, there's demonic activity. But thank God that you and I as children of God, that we have the cross. We have the blood. We have the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that the devil can't do just anything he wants to do in your life or your family or your marriage, or your job, or your home, or your ministry, or your church, because we have the power in the name of Jesus to cast out the enemy of our soul. Glory to God. I believe that G the devils tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory's right. Hallelujah. 
But to, to, to be able to win a battle, to be able to fight a war, you have to know your enemy. You have to know what you're coming up against. Because a lot of times we fight, but we fight it wrong. Rather than going to God, rather than understanding the enemy of our soul, we have to take it to the Lord. And we can say in the name of Jesus and it frightens him. And you can quote the word of God and he will flee. And the Bible says this, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I want you to see that in James 4 and 7. I want you to read it with me. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Don't let the enemy of your soul just do anything he wants to do. We have the authority in the name of Jesus. We have the authority in the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. It is spiritual praise God and we need to know how to use it you need to know the word of God so that you confront the powers of darkness but the Bible said that if we resist the devil that he will flee from you when his temptation comes against you is not working he runs the Bible says you see Jesus was confronted by the devil and the devil came to Jesus in the wilderness when he was weak from thirst and hunger and the devil came and tempted him three times oh notice that Jesus never argued with the devil. Notice that he never debated with him. What did Jesus do? Jesus quoted scripture. Do you see that? Jesus went to the word. Jesus is the word. And he went to the word. And he quoted scripture. He didn't debate with the devil. He didn't have a conference with the devil. He didn't have a talk with the devil. But the Bible said that Jesus who is the king of all kings went to the word of God. And Jesus said it is written. And that's why it's important to know the word of God. It's important for us to know the scriptures. The Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the sword of the spirit. We need to know what Psalm 119, 11, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's more than just carrying the Bible, but I want the Bible in me. I want the word in me. And that takes time to read and to meditate and to study the word of God. Now, it's hard to get people to read the word of God. It's hard to get people interested in Sunday school or Bible studies. It's hard to get children to have the desire to do Bible memorization. Notice that years ago, churches would do that. Bible memorization. They'd bring the kids up in the front, and they'd quote the scriptures. They memorized, and they worked hard. But we can't get kids to do that these days. Their attention span is so short. They have no desire. The devil doesn't want you to memorize scripture. He doesn't want you to know the word of God. The devil is winning in some people's lives. It's important for you to memorize scripture so you'll have the scripture to quote the de to the devil in the hour of temptation. Because I promise you, as a child of God, there are going to be times he comes, the Bible says, as an opportune time. And he's going to come to try to tempt you. But if you have the word of God, you can stand on the word of God. You can quote the word of God to the powers of darkness. And you can say, devil, but thus saith the Lord. It is written in the word of God. Hallelujah. The devil will lie to you, but you go to the word of God that is truth and the truth that will set you free. The Bible clearly teaches that God never tempts anyone to sin. God cannot be tempted, and he doesn't tempt anyone else to sin. So if you're tempted to do wrong, you know that is the devil trying to tempt you. Yeah, oh, let me tell you this. The devil might try to try to cause you to hurt yourself or to harm yourself. You know that's not God because God would never do that. The devil wants to kill. The devil wants to destroy, but not God. Oh, God came to give his life and life more abundantly and overflowing life. Hallelujah. One of the ways to overcome temptation is to go to the word of God and to quote the scripture. We can take God's word and say, it is written. We can declare what God's word and stand upon it by faith and to be filled with the spirit of God and walking in the will of God. Let me tell you, my beloved friends, there is power in obedience. Can I get an amen out of that? There is power in obedience to the word of God. And the Lord will help you and anoint you and the power of the spirit of God will be upon you. And you'll have the victory. Now, I want you to notice a few things about this demon-possessed man. I want you to notice this man that came running towards Jesus the day that he landed on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Notice some of the things about him. The Bible said that he was an unclean spirit dwelled in him. Mark 5 and 2 says, a man with an unclean spirit. 
And look at all the filth in America today. Look at the filth and the pollution in America today. Look at all the moral pollution in America today. We have an unclean spirit that seems to have settled over America and even all over the world. It's everywhere. It's getting worse and worse. Amen. There's our witness here today. You know that it's getting worse and worse. It seems that people are sitting down trying to figure out new ways to do evil, new ways for violence, new ways for hate, new ways for racism, new ways for perversion. It was an unclean spirit that was in control of that man. And Jesus looked upon that unclean spirit as a super supernatural power. But secondly, notice this, that he wore no clothes. Look at the increase of nudity today. I wonder if the devil has something to do with that. Nudity is promoted around the world, and no doubt the devil has control of the internet. The devil has control of movie theaters and entertainment industry. In fact, the Bible says that he is the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of, of disobedience. Our obsession with nudity, the man had no clothes on. And you see it happening today. And thirdly, I, I, I noticed that he was mentally unstable. Worldwide, at least 25% of people and or families are affected by mental illness resulting in significant stress and burden. 25%, one out of every four people, 25 out of every hundred people suffer from mental illness and is getting worse and worse and worse and worse as time goes on. Many hospital beds are occupied all over the world with mental illness patients. Uh, could, could a great deal of this be, be because of demons? Uh, we don't know. We can't say that everyone has mental illnesses because of a demon. We know that there are other reasons. Some may have psychological problems that, that have nothing to do with the devil, chemical imbalances that have nothing to do with the devil. I get that, but there are many people that are under the control. Understand what I'm saying? They're under the control and power and influence of de demon spirits. Uh, we cannot deny the spiritual side of this, that many people in the world suffer demonic attacks, uh, and many people open themselves up to it because of drugs or, or alcohol or abuse. Yes, my friend, the powers of darkness are behind a lot of this. And then notice that he was uncontrolled. Nobody could control this man. In fact, Mark 5 and 3, it says, and no one could bind him. No, it says not even with chains. And they tried to tie him up, and they tried to put him in prison. They tried to put him in a mental institution, but he broke out. Nobody could tame him. No one could control him. He was wild. He was a wild man, and he seemed to have a supernatural power. Uh, he was a violent man. He would go about uh, with fits of rage, taking out, uh, taking out, uh, talking out of his head, uncontrollable violence. And people, the Bible said, could not pass by him, and they would have to stay away from him because of his violence, and he was a wild man. Has there ever been a time when there has been so much violence like you see today in the world? Everybody wants peace, but somehow we don't get peace, and there's violence. We see rioting and killing and murder all around us. This is one of the characteristics of the devil and demons, a nation gone mad, a nation without God, a nation that's rejected God, a nation that's turned the other way, and God gave them up according to Romans chapter 1. God turned him over. And we're not going to stop it with just more police power. And I'm thankful for our policemen and women on the forces that try to protect and defend the innocent law-abiding citizens of this nation. I thank God for them. We ought to pray for them. We ought to lift them up before the Lord and for their safety. But it's going to take prayer power. You understand what I'm taking? It's going to take spiritual power. Uh, uh, we must have people on their knees praying. We must have a spiritual awakening in this country. We must have revival that shakes us to the inner core of our soul. Something's got to shake the church. And understand, all that's going on, all the churches in Marion, and yet we have a drug infestation problem. We have problems and people that are bound and people that that are demon possessed and people that are out of control in this city. We need a power that comes from heaven. We need a power that comes from on high. Praise God. And fifthly, notice that he dwelt among the dead. Mark 5 and 5, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out, cutting himself with stones. And this man lived out of the tombs and he lived in the cemeteries. And have you noticed how uh, so many people have no life in them these days? I've noticed that even in young people, there seems that they have no life. They have no no hope whatsoever. They seem to be walking around like zombies with no hope. And I see it on their faces. I see it on their countenance. Sometimes I see even, even see it with church people. I'm like, don't you have hope? Don't you have life? Do you have the joy of the Lord? Do you have the joy of God? I know the other day I could feel the attacks of the devil and I feel like I was somewhat depressed. And I thought, why am I depressed? Why am I feeling this way? And I'm walking and pacing in the house. And I'm like, why is this happening? And I'm talking to the Lord. My wife was gone. I was praying to the Lord. I was asking God, why do 
do I feel this way? God, I want my joy. Why all of a sudden do I feel like I have no joy? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe you lost your peace. Maybe you lost your joy. And you ask God, why? What's going on? Why? Well, I know the devil fights. I know he wars against us. I realize that. It's a spiritual battle. But then the Holy Ghost spoke the word into my heart and said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Oh, that's where it comes from. It's not from life. It's not from the world. It's not from money. It's not from my job. It's not from my career. It's not from other things. But my joy comes from God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Out of my relationship with God. And the devil wanted me to forget that. Oh, but I had a victory. I worship God. I praise God. And joy came into my heart. I've got joy. And my joy is unspeakable and full of glory. My joy comes from God. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. But there are people today that have no joy. They have no hope. No joy. And I'll try to talk to kids and I'll say, how you doing today? How are things going? And they just, they're like zombies. And we have all these social media devices, but we have the most unsocial generation of all ever. And they bury their heads in their music. And a lot of their music is demonic. And it talks of death and it talks of killing and it brings no hope. But Jesus brings hope. And they have no joy. I can tell <laughs> they have no joy. And I'm trying to speak some joy into them. I'm, I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to minister the gospel of Christ to them and my actions and my attitudes and my demeanor. I'm trying to show them the love of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to reveal to them that there is something else besides just what you have. Uh, there's another dimension to life. There's a spiritual side. There's salvation. And there's healing. And there's forgiveness. And God can give you joy. And God can give you hope. And God can give you purpose. Hallelujah. But many are walking around in darkness. And they're dead in their trespasses and sins. But I've got good news for you today, church. Jesus came to give us life. He came to make us alive. He came to deliver us from the powers of darkness. He came to set us free from the bondage of sin. He came to deliver us from Satan and his demons. Hallelujah. The Bible said that Jesus is the only way. That Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And no man can come unto the Father except by him. Jesus is salvation and his life and his joy and his peace. Jesus, hallelujah, is the answer to a fallen world and a fallen race. He He's not one of many answers. He is the answer. Glory to God. So we must turn to Jesus. The lost must turn to Jesus. America must turn to Jesus. Schools must turn to Jesus. The church needs to turn to Jesus. And our government of these United States needs to turn to Jesus Christ, my King and my Lord, for that is the answer. He's our only hope. He's our only hope. He's our only hope. A fraction of the church gets it. I, I, I tell you the truth. A fraction of the church really understands this. Jesus then stood face to face with this wild, angry, violent, naked, bleeding man. And inside this man, a supernatural voice began to say, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? Do not torment me. And the demon said, what have I to do with you? Hallelujah. What have I to do with you? The rich man says, I don't need the gospel because it's for the poor. The intellectual man says, it's for the uneducated. The common man says, I can't understand it. The ra radical man says, it's not revolutionary enough. What have I to do with you? 
let me tell you, every one of us has something to do with him. And if you don't have something to do with him in this life, you'll have something to do with him in the next life to come. I promise you that. Because there's coming a day when every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and God. You may not bow your knee down to him now, but there's coming a time when you will bow your knee and you'll be forced to bow your knee in that day when uh, we all shall stand before him because there's a day of reckoning that's coming. There's a day of judgment that's coming. And Jesus said, what is your name? Jesus wasn't talking to the man. He was talking to the demon in the man. And out came the answer. We're legion, for we are many. And this man wasn't occupied by just one demon, but he had many demons in him. The Bible says to Mary Magdalene that she had seven demons. Can you imagine one demon's bad enough, but seven demons. There's the young lad that was demon-possessed, and that father would cry out to Jesus, help me. If you'll only believe, and the man says, I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief, help me. And that demon would take that young lad, that son, that young boy, and he'd throw him into the water trying to destroy him. And that demon would then throw him into the fire trying to burn him. And I see it today that the enemy is trying to destroy. Homes are dysfunctional. Children are raped and incest. There's no boundaries anymore. Anything goes. They have access to the entire filth of the world in the palm of their hand, and their parents let them have it. Our generation is going to hell. We have a generation today that does not believe in God. Why do you think we labor and work so hard and spend so much money trying to bust kids in every week? About 50 kids or so, sometimes 60. Why do we do that? Why do we work and labor so hard? Because we're trying to put something of God in them. We're trying to plant something of Christ in them. We want them to know the love of God. We want them to have a true life-changing encounter with Jesus Christ. We want them to know the Lord. Oh, my my God, my friends, listen to me. The filth and the rot and the dysfunctionality that these children are going through today. God, help us. We've got to reach them while we can. we got to do everything that we can. Because Satan wants to destroy them. And he's doing a good job of it today. Two thousand demons in this man of Gadara. Another passage of the Bible in the other gospel is either in Luke or I believe it's in Matthew. I think it's in Matthew that said that there were two men that were demon possessed living in caves and the graves and the cemeteries and cutting themselves and they were naked and they were wild and angry bleeding But Mark refers to one. Maybe this was the lead man. I don't know. But 2,000 demons. The, 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 I don't know if you understand, but the, the torment that this man must have gone through, the, 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 the confusion. I know the man couldn't sleep. I know the man couldn't rest. I know that that demon and the power of darkness in him would probably throw him against the rocks or the caves, cause him to cut himself, to cut his wrists, to mutilate himself, to hurt himself, to harm himself. Is anybody understanding and correlating anything which I'm saying today? Possessed. Jesus commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, and then these demons begged Jesus not to send him into the abyss. Now, in Mark, it talks about into another country, but in another gospel, it says, please, and they begged him not to send them into the abyss or into hell. And I guess we could say that these demons prayed a prayer to Jesus, and, and they asked him, and immediately he they recognized Jesus, and they knew him to be the Son of God. They knew him to have power over them. They knew him and that he could send them to hell. So they prayed in Luke 8 and 31. It says, and they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. 
and you see those those swine up there uh, send us to the hogs. In other words, we would rather go and live in the hogs than to live in hell. I want you to understand this, that, that hell is so bad. Hell is so tormenting that even the demons themselves do not want to go there. Send us to the hogs, but not to hell. Think of it. How terrible of a place hell must be that demons would rather live in the hogs. And yet there are people that will not surrender to Christ. There are people that shake their fist at God. There are people that say no to God. There are people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And they reject his love. And they reject the cross. And they reject the way of salvation. But yet you have the witness of these hall, these demons that are praying to Jesus, a prayer that says, please don't send us into the abyss. Don't send us to hell. Send us to the hogs. What's it, is it going to be, the hogs or hell? And Jesus allowed the demons to go into the hogs, and immediately the hogs became wild. Now there's a lot of debate and speculation of why Jesus allowed this to happen. We don't know exactly. Nevertheless, the G Jesus gave in to their request. There had to be the will of God. And he cast the demons into the hogs, and they became violent and began to run. And they ran over the cliff and drowned in the sea. Now, then after this, a crazy thing happened. And, and all the businessmen of the town came out to see what was going on because word had gotten back to them in town that the demon-possessed man was delivered and set free and set in his right mind. And then, uh, but all the hogs are gone. And so they came out to see what was going on. And there they saw the man that had so much trouble with, this violent, naked man sitting there clothed and in his right mind, absolutely changed and transformed by the power of God. But listen, my beloved, they were not interested in him. They didn't care. Oh, they can think about whether hogs. Oh, they cared about whether hogs. This violent, naked man delivered, set free. But all they cared about. Were their hogs? They're, all they cared about was, was their business, their money. They were more interested in economics than they were in the spiritual transformation. Just like with Paul and Silas, that cast out that demon out of that girl, and the people were upset because she was a fortune teller, and so Paul delivered them by the power of God. Delivered that girl from the powers of darkness, and she's no longer a fortune teller, but now saved by the blood and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the people got angry and mad, and they beat them and threw them into prison. All they cared about was their economics, uh, not spiritual transformation. And so they prayed the most terrible prayer that's in the Bible. And the Bible said these men that came out to see what was going on, they began to plead with him to depart from their region, Marks 5 and 17. In other words, they were saying, Jesus, leave our coast. Jesus, leave our town. We don't want you here. And Jesus, listen to me, Jesus answered their prayer and he left and he never, 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 never came back. What a terrible thing to say. There they had the king of glory standing before them. Nobody can deliver this demon possessed man. Chains could not hold him. He was a wild man. He was a naked man. He was a violent man. He was a troubled man and nobody could control him. But the king of glory steps on the shores of the Gadarenes and he delivers him by the power of almighty God. Jesus spoke the word Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, and glory to God. But they rejected him. There they had the king of glory, but they rejected him. There they had everything they needed, but they rejected him. They told Jesus to leave. Leave. They didn't want Jesus. I'm almost done, but let me just say a few things. This is what I see going on today. I see churches having church without Jesus. They've got their praise band. They've got their music. But they don't want 
Jesus. They want to have their little good time. They lack his presence. They lack his anointing. They lack his power. They lack his truth. And we've brought Jesus down to a human level. And we can't discern the body of Christ. We cannot discern what is God and what is not God. Cannot discern the anointing from that which is not anointed. Can't discern the touch of the hand of God on something and not to have the touch of God on something. We can't discern the body of Christ these days. We don't seem to know the difference. We don't hear the certain sound that we're trying to listen for in the spirit. And they, they told him to leap. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? My grandma needs healing. My dad needs salvation. My kids need the Lord. And you're telling him to leave? You're Jesus can transform your life. But all we care about are the hogs. It's all I'm interested in. I'm only interested in the stock market. I'm only interested in my money. They didn't want to change. They didn't want the word. They didn't want the gospel. They didn't want to hear it. And they didn't want conviction. We want to go to church to have a good time, but I don't want conviction. They wanted their money. They wanted their wealth. They wanted their security. They wanted their material prosperity. They wanted everything the world could offer them, but they didn't want Jesus, and they told him to leave. And the terrible thing is he left. I'm going to tell you something, what they did. They put their job over Jesus. They put their career over Christ. They rejected him. Jesus even came to his own, the Bible says, and his own received him not. Most people don't want Jesus. They want a good time. They want a religious performance, but they really don't want Christ. They run from conviction. They don't want to change. They don't want to admit that there might be some error in their heart or sin in their life. Very hard to get a person to come and humble themselves before the Lord in repentance, acknowledging their desperate need for the Lord. The rich man said, what must I do to be saved? Jesus says, take all that you have and sell it and give it to the poor. Are you kidding me? That's the kind of Jesus I'm talking about that people don't want. They want the money Jesus. They want the material Jesus. They want the Jesus that just helps them in their life but doesn't cause them to change. They can still have their drugs with their Jesus. They can still have their alcohol with their Jesus. They can still have their sex with their Jesus. They can still have all the things of the world and they don't have to change and they can still have Jesus. Not the Jesus of the Bible, but that Jesus of the Bible causes us to be changed and transformed by his power. The inner working power of the Holy Ghost of God that will change you, that will save you, that will wash you, that will redeem you. That will put a joy and a hope and a love and a peace and a, a purpose in your heart and your life. That's the Jesus I'm talking about. The Jesus that set this man, demon possessed, free by the power of God. That's the Jesus we must preach. You can preach that Jesus anywhere, any place, anytime, any country, any nation. That Jesus. Jesus, I wonder how many are rejecting him. How many people say they want Jesus, but they want him on their terms? Every time we do things our own way, we're rejecting Jesus. Every time we don't bring it to prayer, we're rejecting Jesus. Every time we give in to sin, we're rejecting Jesus. I know people in this church that reject his word. And they do everything they can not to be here or in the sanctuary. The answer to your sin problem is Jesus. The answer to all your problems is Jesus. The answer to your drug problem is Jesus. The answer to your anger problem is Jesus. The answer to your immoral problem is Jesus. The answer to your mental illness problem is Jesus. Don't reject him. And, and I don't, there's a balance to these things, but 
doctors will medicate and medicate and medicate and medicate and medicate because big pharma is behind this and there's something behind big pharma and medicate and medicate until you're not, you're not even who you are anymore. And you'll try this psychologist and this psychiatrist and this psychologist and this doctor and this doctor and this doctor and this doctor. And this doctor. What happened to the Pentecostal church coming before the Lord praying for deliverance? What happened? We go to the world. We're listening to too many doctors. We're listening to too many things. Go to the word of God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. There is no doctor that can help this man. There was no drug that can help this man. There was no institution that can help this man. But the king of glory stepped on the shore. Jesus stepped on the shore. And the Bible's telling us that he is the answer for your deliverance. He is the answer for your problem. He is the answer for your mental illness. He is the answer for your salvation. He is the answer for everything. Glory to God. We must take it to the Lord Jesus. Jesus. But every time we try to do it in our own strength, wisdom, or power, we're telling Jesus, we don't want you here. That's what we're saying. We'll come up with every excuse in the book. What happened to trusting God and praying and asking the church to get around and lay hands on me and help me and pray for me? Please don't send them away, but rather accept them and embrace them. Believe them by faith. Run to him. Fall at his feet and worship him and embrace him. Oh, God, help us. Amen. Let's stand to our feet here today. Lord, hallelujah. I don't know how. cause us to understand the importance of this and what's going on today. But I know the answer. I know the hope that we have. I know the one we can turn to. You're the one that can discern and know the difference. Have you put other things before God? Is Jesus the most important thing to you in your life? Are you living for yourself or are you living for God? There's a world that's dying. There's a world that's perishing. There's a world that's on fire. Marion, Ohio is on fire. We have very little time. We got to do everything we can to reach folks, folks. They go to a lost and burning hell. Time is, is running now. Time is short. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I, I want you to be real honest with your pastor here this morning, with yourself and with God. Maybe you're here today and, and maybe there has been some demonic activity in your life. The devil has been warring against your mind. He's been oppressing you. He's been attacking your faith. Maybe you're here today and say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Anybody, just raise your hand. Pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see that. I know. Thank you. I know. I know it. My beloved friends, I, I, I listen, I, I believe as time gets short, the devil knows that time is short. I believe he's going to fight harder. But we got to know what we need to do. We can go to the Word. We can stand upon the Word. We can quote the Scripture. We can say it is written. We can say, devil, this is what the Bible says, and I believe the Word of God. I believe it. No longer will he mess with your family. No longer will you let him have his way in your life. Maybe the enemy is attacking your mind and your heart and your soul. Temptation. Thank God we have his wonderful name that we can stand upon. But you see, I must repent of everything in my life that's not of God. Because I don't want to give the devil not even an inch in my life. Not even an inch. Maybe some of you here today, you say, Pastor, I've, I've been struggling with mental illness. I've been struggling. Just pray for me. Just raise your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. This is the day to be here today. Pray for me, Pastor. Maybe the devil's been trying to tempt you 
to fall into sin. Just pray for me, Pastor. Just pray for me. Pray for me. Thank you. Pray for me. I want God. I want the Lord. There's a world out there that's lost. We need to pray for the lost. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for people that their souls would come to Christ, that they'd repent of their sins. Does anybody that you know anybody, maybe a friend, a neighbor, family member, whatever, that's lost, that's lost? Yes, 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 I know. Yes, yes, pray for them. Time's running out. Bible said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Make sure that you're putting Christ before career. Jesus before job. Make sure you have your spiritual priorities right. Take it to the Lord. Take it to God. I want to give you a few moments here. If anybody's in this place and say, Pastor, I'm not saved, but I want to give my life to Jesus right now. I want to get saved. Just raise your hand. I want to give my heart to Christ. I want to give my life to the Lord. Right now, Pastor, pray for me. Let me just open this altar for a few moments here today. And I'm just going to call the church. I want you to come. Whether you raise your hand or not, I want you to come. And I want you to find a place to pray. And let's seek the face of the Lord. Let's believe God by faith. Let's take it to the Lord right now. Maybe some of you are going through a spiritual battle. Maybe the devil's working over you, whatever it may be. But you know what to do. We're going to take it to God. Maybe he's been tempting you, but you're going to take it to God. You're going to take it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. I open this altar to you. You can come and pray. You can come and seek the face of the Lord. I'm coming to Christ. I'm coming to God. I'm going to pray. Don't be like this town that rejected Christ, that doesn't have enough time for Jesus. Let's take it to the Lord. I take it to God. Lord, I'm asking you to wash over the body of Christ. If that word hits every one of us, God. I pray that you would minister. I pray that you would touch. Because we realize that there is a real battle. The powers of darkness. Satan comes like a roaring lion seeking whom he that may devour. I know there are principalities and powers. Powers of darkness in heavenly places. Rulers of darkness that wage war against us. But God, we come to you. We come to Christ. We come to God. And we trust you. And we believe you. And we stand upon the word of the Lord. And we say, God, it is written. It is written. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fight this battle for me, Lord. Help me, God, I pray. In the name of Jesus, I need your touch. I need your help. I need the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch us. Help us, God. My Lord. My Lord. My God. 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 My Name of the Lord. Heal my brother, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your touch, God. Your touch, God. Your touch. Hallelujah. My God, I come to you, Father. I lay it all at the foot of the cross. I believe the Lord. I trust in your word. I know your word said it is written. I believe the word of God. Hallelujah. I will not reject my Lord. I will not despise my God. Hallelujah. I want him. I want him. I want God. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the Lord in this house, in this place. Hallelujah. We're coming to Christ. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. I want you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want all of God and God to have all of me. I trust him. I believe him. I lay my burdens at the foot of Jesus. I come to Christ. I believe him by faith. I'll 
stand on the word. I will not listen to the lies of the devil. I will trust in God. The Lord fights my battles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord will go before you. God will fight your battles. The Lord will help you. God will strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. Mighty God. The power of Almighty God. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We come to you. We accept you. We receive you. We believe you, Father. In the name of the Lord. You are my God that delivers and my God that heals. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, you fight our battles as we stand upon the word of God. And we know the word of God. And we stand on the truth. The truth that will set you free. The truth that will make you free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have a mighty God. We have a powerful God. We have a great God. Hallelujah. That loves you. That is for you. That wants to help you. <laughs> Glory to God. In the name of the Lord. My God. My God. My God. I trust you. I believe you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. It is God that I want and need. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We combat against the powers of evil darkness, of demon, demons and darkness. God, we have the power of the word of God. We have the blood of Jesus Christ. We have the truth that will set us free. And we believe it, Father. In the name of the Lord, I want a heart after God. I pray you bless my brother. Strengthen my brother. Help my brother. I pray the name of the Lord. Protect his thoughts and his mind, Father. God, my God, my God. I praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have a great God. We serve a good God. We serve a big God. We serve a wonderful God. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are my deliverer. You are my salvation. You are my God. You are my Lord. And you are my defender. Hallelujah. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I put my faith in you. I believe in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. My Lord, my God, and my deliverer. I'll stand upon the word. I'll speak the truth. It is written. It is written. It is written. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. My God and my deliverer. My salvation. The horn of my salvation. I trust in the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power, for the working power, for the inner power of the Spirit of God that works in us. God, we give her all. We surrender all. Cleanse and wash. God, fight this battle. Fight this raging battle. God, my Lord. Hallelujah. You are a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's Lord of the Bible. Hallelujah. As we preach the whole counsel of God's word, I believe him for deliverance. I believe him in the name of the Lord. I believe him. I believe the Lord. I stand upon his word. I believe by faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my God and my healer and my defender and my protector and my provider. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah, I apply the blood of Jesus Christ, who is my healer, that by your stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. My God, I want to believe you by faith. I reach up to you by faith. I stand on that word. Oh, God, save me and I'll be saved. Heal me and I'll be healed. There is a bomb in Gilead. God, I pray in the name of the Lord for the power of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, my God, hallelujah. Lord, we cry to you. Heal my brother. Heal my brother. Heal him, Lord. Jesus, heal him now. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a war, church. I know there's a fight. 
But we're on the winning side. We have the Lord. We have his word. Don't give in to the devil. Don't give in to his temptations. But the Bible says to resist them. And when you resist them, it means to oppose. It means to stand against. Hallelujah. I'm not giving in to it. I'm not giving in to his lies. I'm not giving in to his propaganda. I'm not giving in to his tricks and his methods. I'm not giving in to it. Now, most of the people in the sanctuary took this serious. Most of you did. And I'm thankful. But we have to be careful that in our heart, we're not resisting him. Because if we are, then we're no different than those people in Gadara that came out and prayed and asked Jesus. They pleaded with him to leave. Leave. Well, folks, I can tell you that this pastor and this church, we don't want Jesus to leave. We want Jesus here. We want the King of Kings here. We want the King of Glory here. We want His Shekinah glory. We want His presence. We want the Lord. We want His Word. We want His truth that'll set you free. We want the Lord. We want His grace. We want His mercy. We want His love. We want the Lord. Oh God, don't leave. Don't leave. Don't depart. But come, Lord Jesus. Come to your people. Come. To your children, come to your church, come to the city of Marion, Ohio. This city needs Christ, this city needs Jesus, this city needs revival. Oh God, come, come, Lord Jesus. Please do not leave, please do not depart. But I noticed in the Word of God, and maybe you can prove me wrong. But I've noticed in the Gospels that every place Jesus was not wanted, he left. He left. You can say you're a Christian all you want. You can say praise the Lord all you want. But a lot of times in our heart, we're telling him to leave. I don't want him to leave. I want him. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we stand together today? Praise the Lord. Jesus, almighty God. Father, as we come to you today, we thank you for this time, your presence to worship you. I thank you for the body of Christ that was able to gather together today to honor you, to exalt you, to magnify you. I thank you for the word of God, the truth that will set you free. I thank you for the power of your anointing in the Holy Spirit. I thank you for hearts open to the gospel, to the truth, to Jesus himself. Father, I know that this is a difficult time that we're living in, but God, you have not left us alone. You have not left us as orphans, and we are your children, and you equipped us with the power of Almighty God and the blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ. We have the word of God, and we can put on the whole armor of God. Uh, Lord, help us to recognize what's going on behind the scenes, to realize how to pray, to know how to pray, to pray for our children, to pray for our families, our husbands, our wives, to pray for our churches, to pray for our communities and our cities and our towns, to pray for our state, to pray for our nation, to pray for the world, because we realize that in these last days we can say a deluge of demonic activity taking place right now. Help us, God, to see behind the person and understand that the enemy is waging war, but we know how to pray. We know how to come to the King of glory. We know how to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. We know how to go to the Word of God and say that it is written. We have the tools. We have the weaponry. We have the Lord. We have the power of His Spirit. We have the blood. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the truth. God, help us. Strengthen the body of Christ. Bless them. Empower them. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Give them wisdom in your word. God, give us a desire to read the scriptures, to memorize them, to meditate upon them day and night, to chew them, to swallow them, to know them, to hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you. Lord, I the people that delight themselves in your word are people that are blessed according to the Bible. Let us delight ourselves in Christ, in you, in your word, in your presence. Oh, Jesus. 
Oh, Jesus, I want to love you more. I want to love you more. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Bless my people here today, your people, this church. Bless them. And please, God, let the word be a meditation upon their heart and draw them to you, to you, to Christ. I thank you, Lord, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Let the word be a meditation upon your mind and your heart today. Praise the Lord. Tonight we'll come back at 630. Have our service as we worship our God, as we bow before him. Have communion together in the body of Christ. Thank you for being a part. Glory to the Lord. Have a wonderful, blessed day, my friends.